everybody, Mitchell here from Hockey Winnipeg Referee Development, the Hockey Referee Resource, and today we are talking about entering the end zone in the two official system. So zone entry, it seems so simple on the surface. The puck goes into the zone, you go into the zone. The back official gets to the blue line. It seems like something that should just work naturally, but it doesn't always. And often the number one mistake that officials make when they're doing a zone entry is they stay too close to the boards. But let's back up for a second. Let's talk about before the puck actually goes into the zone. So when you take a look at this image, you're gonna see that the puck is just outside of the end zone and the front official at the bottom of that image is inside the blue line in a good position to decide if a call is offside or onside. The back officials following the play off the ice. Now that front official, as that puck goes into the zone, is going to go down into the zone and take up proper position in the piston system. Now this is often where a mistake is going to be made by the official because they stay too close to the boards regardless of whether the puck goes into their side of the ice, onto the far side of the ice, or straight to the net. When we talk about the back official, the back official is simply going to come down to the blue line within about half a foot to a foot of the line. So if they're in a position to make a determination of the puck getting in or out of the zone, if it comes back to the line, but they're also outside of the zone, so if the puck hits them, it actually changes zone still and we don't stop the puck from leaving the zone. Both officials at this point are all always working to be square to the puck, so that they're facing that puck and have an easier time to get out of the way. Now the front official has three ways that they can enter into the zone. So this first way is to stay close to the board. So if the puck is on your side of the ice when it goes into the zone, such as with the blue dot here, then that official is going to stay on the boards and come down to home base, stay on the boards, because that puts them in the correct position for when the play is moving around them. But let's say with this next example, as with the black dot, the puck goes to the far side of the ice. This is a situation where you do not stay on the boards. Instead, you go directly to half piston. This third example is for the orange puck and this time the puck has went straight to the net and once again rather than staying on the boards the official is going to go to an at the net position. In each one of these three end zone entry options it's always putting you in a position to succeed because it's taking you are taking yourself directly to your end zone positioning rather than staying close to the boards. Now let's watch some videos to see how this happens in real life. So in this first clip, you can see that the official gets to the line, makes a call, stops, and then goes into the zone. Works out pretty well, stops play for the goalie covering. However, we have this part here doesn't work as well. He stays near the boards. Rather than staying near the boards, because the puck went to the net, the official could have went to the to the net position. So as this play comes in the net, right here, the play is right into the net, he can take a diagonal right there, straight to the net. In this example, you can make a call without stopping. Once again, though, near the end, you can see the official staying near the boards. That play is going to the net, you can go to the net. You do not need to stay near the boards. Go to the net if the play is going to the net. 